is Art Attack. <laughs> And welcome to the Art Attack Kitchen. For today's recipe, you place two bags of flour into a plastic washing up bowl, then enough water to mix into that and make it nice and squidgy. You get your hands stuck in, press your hands around, get your fingers stuck in, and you make yourself some dough. Pat it out nice and flat, and then you stick your face in it. For five seconds. I bet you thought I was going to make bread then. Well, actually, I've made a mould of my face, and into that, I'm going to pour some plaster of Paris. I'll tell you how to mix that later on. And when I've done that, a postcard size piece of card right across the top of the head, just to square it off. Then you leave that to dry overnight, and then the next morning, it's the good bit. You peel back the pastry, and there you are. Well, actually, in this case, it's me. Now, if you've got a few rough edges around your mask, don't worry about it. You can sandpaper them off, because the next step is to decorate it. And what I've got here is acrylic paint. It has to be acrylic paint. You can get that from most art shops. You might even have some in school. I'm just going to slosh it on there, so you can see what I'm doing. Nice bright red lips. Like this. And do one eye. Right across the top of there. Now, if you do your design on paper first, you can actually come up with some quite good effects. How's about your own theatrical mask? This is me. Or, if it all goes terribly wrong, don't worry about it. Keep your mask, because you can make your own Frankenstein mask, Frankie Buchanan. And then when you get really good at it, how's about your own tribal warrior mask, the Buchanan tribe? Or your own Egyptian mummy mask? And yes, here comes the joke, this is my mummy. And then you can make, just to finish it off, your own headdress. How's about that for an art attack? Pastry face masks. When mixing the plaster of Paris, be sure to follow the instructions carefully on the packet. And don't just throw the pastry away, give it to the birds. And if you want to make a really good mould, really bury your face in the pastry. <laughs> This can, of course, be taken too far. You know, some artists paint on the strangest things. Sue Venning paints on people. Yes, I detect some very nice cartoons there. Hello, my name's Sherlock Bones, Private Detective. Uh, actually, my name's Sherlock Bones, Private Detective. Actually, you're both wrong. I'm Sherlock Bones, Private Detective Extraordinaire. 
Well, the truth is they're all Sherlock Bones, private detective extraordinaire. He's the cartoon character, if you remember, we've been creating over the last couple of weeks. Now, he started out life as just a piece of white paper, and now he's come to this, together with his trusty assistant, What's Up? So, OK, you've created your cartoon character, what do you do with it? Well, obviously, you want to give it life and take it off the paper, so how's about making a very simple puppet like this? I it. Now, what I've done here is I've cut out the mouth, split it in two, stuck it onto a lever on the back, just a bit of card there, put some card over the top, and away you go. You can even give them a voice. Hello there. Or you could always make a model out of modelling clay. And the great thing is, is you can paint it up to your own colours later on. Or if you're any good with fabrics, you can create a glove puppet. Hello there, I'm Sherlock Bones. Now, this isn't as hard as it looks. What I've done is I've taken two sheets of fabric and cut them out roughly in the right shape. There, like that. And there's a ball with a hole in the top, which I stick my fingers into. That can be the head, again, with fabric on the top. Sew these two sheets of fabric together with the ball inside, and there you have him. Now, if you think your cartoon character is very good, why not send it to a comic? That's exactly what I'm going to do with Sherlock Bones. Now, let me give you a few tips. First of all, what you need to do is map out your story in rough first. Then, you should divide your page into some boxes for your story and draw it in pencil. And when you're happy with it, go over it in ink, rub out the pencil marks, and then colour in and make it nice and bright and bold. And there it is. And also, if you're going to do any special effects or sound effects, do those in very big boxes like that. So here it is, the first adventure of Sherlock Bones. Hello, I'm Sherlock Bones, the world's greatest detective. And this is my trusty friend, What's Up? I solve dangerous crimes because I keep my eyes and ears open at all times. Uh-oh, help! Uh, you seem to have uh, slipped on the outer casing of an exotic tropical fruit. I'd better put this rubbish where it belongs. Exactly. Not bad at all, eh? First adventure of Sherlock Bones. Next week, he gets his proper voice. And this is my fish. My name's Ashley, and this is a batik. Oh, that's a fantastic technique. It's called batik. It's molten wax on material, and the material soaks in all the colour, all the paint and the ink when you put it on, except on the waxy bits, leaving a pattern or a picture. Now, there is another way that you can create a wax-resist picture using one of these, ordinary household candle. You just draw an invisible picture onto your paper with a candle like that. When you've done it, watercolour paint, nicely mixed in with loads of water, and you can brush it or sponge it right across your paper. And miraculously, there's your picture appearing. A little bit of wax, a little bit of paint, a little bit of a wax attack.
on your marks. Get set. Have a go. Make up your own during the dots. It's great fun. It's really easy to do. Mm. Yeah? Oh. Of course, it helps if you follow the numbers. Here's a quick drawing of the cup. Now see if you can spot the deliberate mistake. Got the mistake? Actually, there's quite a few in there. What I've done is I've drawn what I think a cup looks like, not what that cup actually looks like to me. And you know, that is a really good tip to remember next time you're drawing. Draw what you can see, not what you think you can see. Take a closer look. So bearing that in mind, let's go for the cup again. So what can I see? Well, the top of the cup has got an oval rim. There it is straight like I drew before. The sides are curving down from where I'm standing on the edge there. The saucer, well the saucer's got like another oval shape to there and another oval shape around there. And what about the handle? I can only see a bit of it sticking out the side there. So I'm only going to draw what I can see. There you go. It's looking better already. Good tip that, when you're drawing, look closely and draw what you can see, not what you think you can see. By the way, whatever you do, don't throw away your scrap paper. Cut it up or rip it up and use it to create an art attack. See you next week.